beta one and alpha two b beta three uh, integrins. So they use this property uh, in different experiments that we'll show later that uh, how they could basically replace the alpha v beta three with the alpha two b beta three integrin and see the effects that that had. Um, so the main goal of their experiments were to evaluate the cell growth on uh, different surfaces and compare the elasticity. So they use fibronectin, as we mentioned before, which is a type of like glycoprotein that binds to uh, these integrins, but with different effects. Um, and fibronectin binding to these integrins has sh been shown previously to uh, play a role in regulating cell mechanics. Um, so the experiments they used were atomic force microscopy, which is basically they, uh, it's a way to, it's a common way to measure cell uh, stiffness. So basically they probe the cell with a tip that's connected to this, uh, like it's, I think it's called an antilever um, or some sort of lever that when you uh, poke yeah, the that cell, was right. antilever. yeah, antilever, that antilever bends in a certain way uh, and you can measure the elasticity based on how much it bends. And then in another experiment, they also use this thing called microconstriction analysis. And we compared it to this uh, thing on the right where you have to squeeze through uh, the, where the air is pointing, you have to squeeze through. So basically they sent cells to a constricted uh, area and saw and basically measured how fast they go through and what how much they were deformed and they were able to use that to also measure uh, cell elasticity. Perfect. So now um, moving into the figures themselves, this first figure is just a repeat of the information right here about the different um, melanoma cell types used. It's just visualized. So as you can see in M21, these are antigens labeled in order to denote the presence of the specific integrin or yeah, antibodies um, specifically to help denote the presence of different um, integrin receptors. Um, specifically in the M21 cell, we see the AV, uh, the alpha V beta three, we see that it is missing from the M21 L and from the M21 GP two B beta three, um, where here it is replaced with on the far right, this alpha two B um, sort of replacement I, for the alpha B3. Sorry, sorry, I kind of miss what is the what's MFI? I miss that. Uh, this is mm, the, fluorescence intensity. Yeah, so they were just trying to, that's just um, showing that these are actually present. So then they use the mean fluorescent intensity to say, oh, this antibody binded the receptor itself, so it's present and it's fluorescing. Oh, they're just looking at these these various. Proteins yeah, this is, there. I see. Yeah, this is just showing that these specific cell lines that we touched on here are the actual cell lines themselves. So you. thank you. No real new information in this other than to show that the cell lines that they said they were using are actually what they did use. Um, but then in the next two graphics, we'll start to get into a little of the meat of this paper. And the first is to show that in these cells themselves, um, there was a relationship between the uh, alpha B beta three integrin and um, sort of in up regulation and stiffness overall. Um, this little triad right here represents in the same order as before. The M21 without any letters after it is the one with the specific integrin in question and it has its young modulus um, measurement is the highest, meaning there's the most amount of um, strain there. Um, and interestingly enough, when there is no, um, when there's none and it's replaced with the alpha V beta GP2 B beta three in this gray one, it's down regulated and there's less strain. Um, the reason that these other two graphs are here then shown is that um, they were used, it was then, the cells were then grown on a fibronectin coated dish, um, which is a different type of um, growth. This is called adherent growth, sort of because it grows um, on a like protein coated dish. And as we can see here in both cases, in either cell, whether it has the presence of the integrin in question, the alpha B beta three um, integrin, it's upregulated. And you can see here there's growth. And so these three on the left are called suspension growth, whereas here it's adherent, adherent conditions. 
And so the overall takeaways from this are that A, the presence of the alpha V beta three integrin helps growth and the absence inhibits the growth or the specific strain on the cells. And likewise in adherent conditions, um, cell growth and overall strain so, is going to be higher. I just want to make sure, so you're saying growth, but I think this is, uh, Young's modulus is usually a, a, a stiffness, like it's- Yeah, a, sorry, I'm using those yeah. interchangeably, which I shouldn't be. Okay, I just want to, yeah, just can you clarify for us? Sorry, yeah, yeah, the paper used growth throughout, but in all the measurements we saw stiffness, so that was just my sort of like a, I forget the dude's name. Uh, Either way, yeah, so this is all Freudian. across the board. Is that what you're yeah, Freudian slip, that's what I meant. Um, across the board, this is all for um, the stiffness itself. So it's to say that with the presence of this, there is increased cellular stiffness. When there, it's absent in this gray bar, it is the least overall. But then when it grows on something, um, sort of these fibronectin glycoprotein coated dishes, there's additional um, stress or strain. Um, the way that we sort of imagine this is, I don't know how many of you have played the game Red Rover, where you like link arms with different people and um, then call someone over to run and run through your arms. Um, but we imagine that if you were to play that game alone and you were to say, hey, come try and run over me and you're standing alone um, in the sort of suspension S growth by the three bars on the left where it didn't grow on a dish, it would be much easier to run someone over than when you have a partner to link to, which is sort of how when it grows on the fibronectin, it is connected to something else and that overall increases the strain and strength. Um, so then Isaac, yeah, you want to so, this next figure? Yeah, so this is uh, basically testing different concentrations of fibronectin um, and seeing the effect that it has on cell stiffness. So what this graph is basically showing that increasing changing the amount of the fibronectin concentration doesn't really have an effect on how stiff the cells are um i mean you can see a little bit of difference but they concluded that it wasn't uh significant and that the fibronectin concentration doesn't really increase uh stiffness um and then also if you look at the the scale on the for the young's modulus um, it goes way higher than the previous graph. So this is 8,000 and the previous graph was only like 1,200. Um, and so they uh, say that this occurs because uh, in this experiment, they, they use fibronectin only without this uh, BSA, I think it's bovine serum albumin. Uh, and so that uh, they, so they used BSA in the previous experiment, uh, the previous graph, sorry, uh, which blocks uh, fetal calf serum from binding uh, to the fibronectin. But in this case, the uh, fetal calf serum can bind to the fibronectin, which brings along other proteins, which helps uh, make the cells even stiffer. So they also s said that uh, it's pr in the cell, um, these cells grow more stiff, not only with fibronectin and this integrin, but along with other proteins that also bind to the integrin and also make the cells more stiff. That's, a, that's an interesting little um, tidbit about that BSA by adding in that extra protein, that, that yeah. bovine serum albumin, they're able to block those protein-protein interactions to kind of mess with the network structure and architecture of that fibronectin network. That's pretty cool. And then those changes get those huge differences in stiffness. Uh, yeah. That's, that's an interesting kind of like little side uh, piece of nugget knowledge in there. Like if you wanted to change the stiffness of your cells, you could play with just that simple addition mm -hmm. change of adding BSA or not, which is a very common ingredient. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so we're pretty close. So yeah, we've yeah, gone. We have one figure. Left. We have one okay, figure. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and then do yeah. we have a do we have a discussion thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's keep cruising then, and we'll see how it goes. Right. Honestly, this figure isn't this, that important. This last one's quick. Yeah. It's, yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. Um. So basically, in this figure, we're not really exactly sure why they included this figure in the paper because it went against everything they said previously. Um. Because in this one, it shows that the M twenty one GP two B cells which don't have the alpha V uh, beta three integrin that they were studying before. It shows that these cells actually grow more stiff when in not in here conditions. 
So in this one, they use the microconstriction uh, analysis instead of the atomic force mic microscopy, which uh, they used before. And so if you remember, I said it, the microconstriction is when they send uh, cells through a microconstricted space and basically kind of measure uh, cell stiffness like that. So this kind of goes against what they were showing before that the alpha V beta three integrin is related to more stiffness in melanoma cells. Um, but they kind of reasoned that this was the case because uh, I think they said that the M21 GP2B cells, uh, the nucleus was softer and also uh, that uh, there's a state, these cells have a softer paranuclear area. Um, and so this, they basically said, concluded that this test wasn't a good test to uh, actually show how stiff the cells are because they only measured certain areas of the cell and uh, it kind of skewed the results. So I'm, we're not really exactly sure why they included this figure um, in the paper. So it seemed to contradict what they said before, but maybe it was something the reviewers asked for. Yeah, I think the one reason we think that they did include it is that something that they explained very early in this paper is that they don't fully understand this relationship yet. And they thought that maybe if they did find conflicting information, it was worth to at least share for future researchers to recognize. But that was yeah, really I, think, could. I think it's interesting because it is a different way to measure the stiffness. And since they're getting different results, there's probably some information in there, like what there's these issues like that they brought up. So yeah. they just kind of probably needed to further refine it. But I think it's probably good that they included, you know, it's just uh, transparency, you know, it right. might muddy their story, which is not great, but um, it's good to be transparent uh, and clear. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Um, so then looking at the results, they found that yes, the expression of the um, AB, B3 integrin in these cells influence stiffness. Um, they found that in either condition, um, um, there were effects like we discussed. And then they found that fibronectin does influence the overall stiffness. However, burying the concentration itself does not because there are other proteins at play. Um, and so then the relevance, like we touched on at the beginning, um, Isaac and my own personal vested interest, um, as well as the prevalence of skin cancer and the modernity of this article being that it was published in February of 2026, only a few months old and encouraging future research. Um, but so moving to the discussion activities, um, figure two, which is on the right, was probably the most important figure from this paper, or at least the foundational piece. And we wondered if there were any um, big takeaways or um, improvements you think you could make to the graph itself. Um, the format, obviously, for all of these um, can vary. I'm not sure how it's best to break this up. We were imagining sort of just breaking off with partners like we did the other day, but also if we just want to have a class discussion for time's sake, that works. Um, but then the first question is, what are the changes or any improvements you can make to this graph? There was one specific piece of information we thought was lacking. If any of you can figure that one out. The next is, how do you think cell stiffness might impact the life cycle of a melanoma cell? And um, lastly, akin to the way that we talked about how mice can lick their offspring and um, strengthen a relationship. Um, how do you, can you propose a mechanism or relationship for how sunlight can lead to increased cellular stiffness? And so we have sort of uh, answers or ideas for all of these, if people want to speculate first, or if Tori, if you have a better way to break yeah, it down. Do you want to just walk us through one at a time as a class and we'll try to get some, some sure. shit that way, just because, and we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll keep it to like five minutes on this. Awesome. Great. So we have five minutes here, so no rush on anything. And yeah, if you can just kind of guide us through the first ones and let's try to get some shares, some thoughts. So yeah, um, we can first, I think, talk about this graph on the right. I can actually go back to the slide if that makes it bigger and it's easier for people, just let me know. Um, but what this graph was showing overall is that in the presence or with the alpha V beta three uh, integrin, um, which is in the M21 cell, there is an up regulation of like there's, in, it grows to be more strained or there's more stress present and without it, there's not. And likewise in adherent conditions, um, when it is growing on a fibronectin coated dish, it is uh, upregulated even more. There's even more overall cell stiffness and strain. Um, but we think that there's certain information missing. So we're wondering, does anyone have any ideas for what could be added or any other changes, cosmetic or not, 
that could benefit this graph. I mean, is there a reason that they didn't include the M21 GP2B? Yeah, so that was that was like the right answer, I guess, we were looking for. Um, we thought it was really strange that they didn't include that um, because we thought that it would be pretty important to show that when it grows on the fibronectin coated dish, it follows the same trend. Um, but there was no mention of it, of why they didn't include it, and no mention of it growing on that. So we speculated that maybe it doesn't grow on that, like it doesn't bind fibronectin, which would be weird, but that was, otherwise it's just missing. So yeah, I guess that we hit on the first one, so that was good. Um, I think we can, are there any other changes or questions people have about this graph though? I mean, I got some, I got some issues with it. Up at the top, sure. this, this key is like fibronectin yeah. substrate and then yeah, yeah, substrate. I don't even know what this key represents. What is this for? I, <laughs> I think they're saying like the one, the bare substrate is like the solid colors and the fibronectin is kind of like the, I don't know what they did to it, like, like more opaque colors. Um, but yeah, it's not a, it's not a yes. good key. Yeah, it seems like it, like they have the label down there with fibronectin. It seems like they should just like kind of label it down yeah. there. Yeah. It's, it yeah. seems poorly, just kind of like hastily put together, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't the best figure. Um, I think, though, to the more interesting and mechanical components of this piece, um, does anyone, and these next two questions are sort of linked, I think, but does anyone want to speculate on how you think cell stiffness might impact the life cycle of a melanoma cell? Um, at the very beginning, I'll just keep back there real quick. Um, we did mention that there has been speculation and findings and research that shows that um, AVB3 integrin promotes melanoma tumor survival, meaning that this increased strain helps those to survive. Um, but if anyone has any propositions about um, how increased stiffness might help a cell survive, we're looking for those types of, or looking to spur that conversation. So yeah, think about the things we've learned about stiffness you know, throughout the class too. Well, if the cells are more stiff, that would mean that there's more strain being put on it, both intracellularly and extracellularly, which means that it can't move as much, I guess, like it's more locked in position. Based on the paper from last week, aren't like stiffer cells better able to like survive like in, in tumors and stuff or? Yeah, that was sort of why we included this question was it felt like a natural progression from last week's conversation. And that was our understanding. We were wondering in the context of maybe like skin cells specifically, if anyone had any maybe new insights. So what if it's like stiffer, it's more stable and connected to its environment. So it's less likely to be uh, maybe like turned over what like as skin cells are, or it's just more likely to more likely to not be degraded by, you know, something random. I don't know. Sure. And then, Tori, we can talk about this last one. This last one's more, I guess, up for just the imagination, or we can talk about what we found in our research. Um, but the question is, how do you think sunlight leads to increased cellular stiffness? And is there any type of like relationship, like the light or the heat causes X, Y, or Z to happen? I mean, I think you could say that like excess of UV light exposure can lead to like 
tumors happening or like uh, skin cancer. And like, uh, I think last week we talked about how cancer cells tend to be stiffer in groups, but that's just the relationship I saw. Is an increased stiffness a stress response at all? Because it could be something like that since the heat is kind of like killing the cell. Um, it could be putting it into some sort of stress response situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that was sort of what we were working on was that like the heat or like the light sort of dries out and the cells sort of just are tensed or stressed in response to the excess heat. Um, and overall that is, would be an increase in cellular stiffness. But yeah, um, that's really what we have. Um, I'm not sure, Tori, if there's any transition you want us to no, do. No, um, that was fantastic. Let's uh, everyone unmute our mics if, if we can, and let's give a round of applause. It's going to be an amazing round of applause.